Sean Sport in podcast form. Heading into the world of the AFL and Gil McLaughlin, AFL CEO, has been asked about the Tassie um, AFL team. And in particular, can they, are they fully, fully committed? And because people are saying that the opposition over in um, Tasmania at the moment, which is the Labor and Greens Party, is saying, what a waste of money. Oh, so they're talking about the stadium, right? Stadium, yeah. Because yep. there is a, like, Blundstone Arena it, it, is only a few thousand seats smaller than the yep. proposed new stadium. And I yep. understand why they might blow back on that. Do you yeah, know well, what I mean? Yeah. Well, from over here, you go, why don't they just build it for 23, yes. 24,000? I mean, why I get it that it's got, a, it's got a roof and it's going to be more comfortable yep. for people going to watch yep. the football. But capacity wise, it's not a big increase. And it's yeah. like a it, lot of money for only a few more thousand seats. Yeah. This is Gil with his response. It's easy to oppose things. It's easy to point to alternate uses of, of capital. But actually, the business case around this, about actually tourism, construction, economic impact, pride, there is a demonstrated business case. And this, the business case is for Tasmanians with significant funding coming externally, I think significant. The one mm. thing, yeah, we can all, I mean, we, it's easy for us to question um, the amount of people that can go to that stadium. But mm. just thinking back to when we built our stadium, in the end, it's a bloody yeah. good idea. You have something like that, and people will go down and watch games in Tassie now. It's got a roof yeah. on it. They can they get yes. their own comfort. And, and also attract other events, presumably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause it is it does have a roof. Yeah. We've had a bloody huge success with, with our stadium, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. Coldplay coming, all the concerts we're getting these days, rugby yeah. union, rugby league that's mm. been playing there. It's been an absolute Test cracker. Cricket. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just need to have a go yeah. and... But I mean, why not build something for the future rather than for now and make it a 40,000 seat stadium? Because presumably the cost is not significantly more if you're building a 40,000 seat stadium versus a 25,000 seat stadium. Again, Nat, I'll have to say that I totally agree with you, but from over here, I'm not sure yeah. what the reasoning is. Yeah. I've only heard Matthew Richardson say on um, TV once, he said, yeah, that's about the right number. I don't think. How yeah, do you get now, to that right number? Yeah. But maybe they have a something built. So Optus Stadium has, you know, the they've built... Uh, yes, it's future-proof. Like, future-proof. So, so that it can be extended. Yeah, yeah. so I don't know if... The, I mean, difficult yeah, with a, with a with roof. roof on, mm. but they must have something in You can suspend people from the ceiling. Why wouldn't <laughs> they you? just look down. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, wait and see with Strap that one. yourselves in for this one. <laughs> and um, just, just quickly, the West Coast Eagles obviously playing Hawthorne this week. Now, a lot of people are saying... In Tassie, yeah? Yes. Yeah. This is the Harley Reid Cup. Now, Harley yeah, Reid is a Victorian player who people are saying are cross between Dusty and Luke Hodge. I mean, everybody who what, plays before... What a before, weird combination, Everyone goes, way. oh, this player's like... Yeah, they, so. they love to compare. They're nothing like them. No. They're just their own version of who yeah. they are. Is it worth finishing last to pick this guy up if you're a West Coast Eagles... Um, well, you're a West Coast Eagles fan now, so what do you think is it, I don't know. I don't know anything about him. But okay, and, so and, he's the best player. Yeah, Once but again, is he that is he much better than talent? the second guy? Do you know what I mean? Well, that's a good question. People are saying he's clearly the best player in the ki- on the comp at yeah. the moment. So yeah. uh, can he change the fortunes of your club, this one person? Yeah. He can't if you get it right. Yeah. One person can change But also, the you know, we we hear this every year. They name the <laughs> – I remember the Cruiser Cup back in the day, you know, when they were accusing <laughs> um, Carlton of tanking it. And, that, and they that, did. And it hasn't helped them win a premiership. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's, whatever happens with the West Coast Eagles and where they finish is going to take a number of giraffes to be able to get the uh, draft capital to be oh, able to I have the players. Giraffes. <laughs> the players to be able to move forward up yeah. the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we'll see. Jeremy McGovern's in the house at the moment. Of course, we're waiting for the governor to come back. It's only a few weeks away um, from you getting back in or getting out there, Gov. Yes. Uh, yeah, not too far. I'm Two to four, tra- apparently. I think I'm going to do a little bit of training on Thursday, I'm hoping. I'm, uh, what, pushing... not just running laps, you mean actually? Yeah, I'm getting away from chasing <gasps> chasing that white line around. I yeah. want to like, actually chase the football. for. That's what I'm there for. So uh, it's exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting back into some training. Hey, um, just off air, we were talking about, um, you know, possible retirement and country footy in particular, right? So your mate plays down in Dunsborough and yep. I'm a chance to play down there very shortly. But news, I mean, the, the injury news. list suggests otherwise, but keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It certainly does, Nat. But you were saying how good it would be to play and, you know, be that person who can kick 100 goals, 150 goals. Bit of leather poisoning. The... I'm putting a lot of... It sounds extremely arrogant, doesn't it, actually? <laughs> saying I'm going to kick 100 goals. Uh, I don't Could know how many back, goals I'd impressive. kick, but I'd, I'd, I'd love to just uh, sit in the cage and get it get it fanged in there um, and kick a couple of goals for sure down the country league. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah. Do you know many guys who have gone back and played country footy? 
A uh, few. I know Lecker, Lecker has. I think JK is going to play a couple. Is he? Um, yeah. Imagine uh, having a lineup on JK. Some oh. poor farm kid. So, oh yeah. God, well, I think Harry go. Taylor's still playing. Harry, yeah, Harry, Harry Taylor's he? been playing. Yeah, there's still a fair few crew that are around the leagues and all the different leagues around yeah. WA and or even over in Victoria. It sounds it sounds pretty fun, to be honest. It, it sounds really fun. I always thought that, um, yeah, so over in Victoria in particular, yeah. there's so many you know, retired dudes over there, but they all go back, seem to, like Boomer Harvey. Yeah. He played all the games in the world and he yes. still goes back and plays suburban footy. Yeah, till he broke his leg. And then yeah. over here, I thought there was, um, I don't know, and I was one of those people, there wasn't, it, it, we just didn't do that. Uh, yeah, it wasn't sort of a, it wasn't a standard pathway. No, and and I and I regret that wholeheartedly. I I wouldn't think there's nothing better than even I know having Boris run Shammel around in the, in the waffle. You didn't even you never no. I should have done that as well. I did oh. like three pre seasons in a row with Freya, like full pre seasons after I finished playing. Yeah, but because I was reporting on games on the weekend. Yeah. I was at them. You're busy. I was yeah. busy, but then I kept saying Steve Malax has headed up our development when I was working under him, and he and I kept thinking June 30 because that's the cutoff. Yeah. I'll just I'll just go and start playing, you know, and I'll play the last six games of the year or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I never did. Never did. I regret it. Yeah, I might, it, it sounds, it's exactly what you play footy for. Personally, for me, you just go out there and have a bit of fun yeah. and, um, couple and of try beer, and enjoy it. A couple of frothies with the mates afterwards. A few afterwards. beers after and, uh, and sing the song and, and still try try stay half fit. Um, sure. It's probably, it's probably my excuse. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, um, another poor performance on the weekend, but this game <laughs> against sure. Hawthorne. Wow. <laughs> It's hurtful. No, straight into it. Yeah, straight into it. It's got feelings. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the game against Hawthorne, um, it's an important one because it's another. It's a team that you could easily knock off. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, I think we're we're both very much in the same boat. Obviously, yes. sitting on the bottom of the ladder at the moment. Um, it's definitely a winnable game for us and and for them as well. But um, yeah, down in Launceston, so uh, the boys got to travel over there later on the week. But um. Oh look, we're we're approaching it like every other week. We we want to try and win um, every week we play. We felt like we had an opportunity last week against Gold Coast. They are a very good side, and that they mm. showed that against us on the weekend. But um, yeah, every week we we play, we're trying to win for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's a big one. When you played in Launceston, and yep. uh, and Ho- have, you, have you played in Hobart? Hobart as well, as well yeah. Long sleeves? No. <laughs> never. You would never wear long sleeves? No, not personally. This is a personal thing. Yes. Long sleeves uh, for silks. <laughs> because you're not in your position, you're not running around non-stop like the midfielders are. No, so you don't get cold. Oh no, you definitely don't get cold. We still run around a little bit. No, not, yeah, no, I don't I'm, stand, I'm I don't not still in the pocket and do nothing. Still the whole this time. isn't country footy <laughs> yet. We're not at that level. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, you move around enough. But look, I like, I do like seeing some boys in long sleeves. But for me personally, no, no, and especially if there's any boys down back who are considering. Wearing long sleeves, there's a there's a tough there's, conversation. There's about. there's a yeah. rule in the back. <laughs> yeah. line. I feel like the backs just can't do it. I I think if you're a forward or a mid or, mm. or whatever, I think you can get away so with it. I feel it. like I I've seen Tommy Barris in long sleeves. Have oh, I? I can I have at some stage? Tommy Barris wouldn't be hiding those arms. That's for sure. That's <laughs> that's, that's a criminal act. He's uh, <laughs> he's got some beautiful pipes on him. So um yeah, you shouldn't be hiding them. Short only wore long sleeves once, didn't you? Once, yeah. I had the same rule. I didn't want. Well, I didn't allow anyone to wear uh, long sleeves. I I'll just. Yeah. Call them a pussy, basically. Yes. <laughs> that would be the thing. Call it what it is. Mouth. Yeah. And um, anyway, this one day in Geelong it was the coldest day in Melbourne for 25 years. So imagine we, that. We, imagine we go down to Geelong was. to play the Cats, and it was freezing. Get off the bus. It's just freezing. Get in the change rooms. And when we went out there, I thought, oh, well, we'll warm up. Yeah, because um, you're running around. Yeah. So we ran out, and it was just horrendous. It was so cold that the guys from the trainers in Geelong. We're running out um, hot buckets of water so the Geelong players <laughs> could put their hands in. Yeah. So we came in after the warm up of twenty minutes being out there. Yeah, and you like, hadn't no, warmed up at all. <laughs> no. Paddy Watson, he was our property guy. Paddy, get us the long sleeve, mate. This is the worst thing I've <laughs> ever come across in my life. It was horrendous. See, I don't think it's going to work. You're going to get warm enough. Your arms, maybe for your hands, wearing gloves, I can understand that because your hands do yeah. get so yeah. cold and you're hitting the ball and all that sort of stuff. But I just don't see the point in the arms personally. But um. Yeah, lawn test, and we've they normally give us hand warmers. Oh yeah, nice. Okay. So yeah, the just the disposable hand warmers yes. you put them in your pockets yeah. when you're warming up and stuff, and they do absolutely nothing because it's so <laughs> it's so cold down there. It's uh, but um, no, it's good. Lawn is nice. I've only ever played there once. It was my second game, but um, is that right? Your second yeah. game you played in yeah, Launceston? Yeah, yeah. And you've never Hawks. been back? No, I haven't. No. 
No, I don't. I'm, well, I don't think I have. I can't remember going back. I've been to Hobart a couple of times yeah, yeah. For, for North, but um, no, I haven't haven't been back since. So, unfortunately, I won't be back again. But yeah, no. we had that Siren Gate game down there. Of course, against, he did. Yeah, uh, against St Kilda, actually. When yeah. when the umpire didn't hear the siren. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And I was sitting on the bench. Uh, I'd done my hammy. I don't know about a in the start of the third quarter and I was sitting on the bench next to the umpire which was Brett Rosebury who's umpired still umpiring now 400 mm. games and he was sitting next to me and the siren went and we all heard it and we stood up and started to walk onto the ground mm. he was next to me we were talking and then um, the the game kept going on and um, St Kilda ended up getting a point blah 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 when the umpires then had to give go to the tribunal about it because they oh, had yes. to turn... They did an inquiry into yeah, it. Yeah, so the umpire's on the field, so they didn't hear it. And Brett, who was the uh, emergency umpire, he said he didn't hear it either. But he was with he you was with me, walking onto, onto the, the middle ground. of the field. Oh, I'll hold just, that against him. Yeah, he was just staying loyal to his umpires out there and <laughs> yeah. looking after him, backing them up. <laughs> Can you, Brett? <laughs> <laughs> So John really has signed on for the Perth Wildcats, yeah. the twenty so twenty three twenty four season and twenty four twenty five season. So he's got two years to go on his contract. I thought it was a quite a big move from the Wildcats. Didn't they already have him to, for two years? They've just exercised oh, they've, that third year option. Yeah, 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 yeah third year option. Yeah, so he's yeah. still got two years left yeah. to coach the Perth Wildcats. I thought when you see him publicly, it was very difficult to get. A good conversation. He plays out a very of this straight year. bat, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, but I mean, what what he is publicly and how he is a is a coach aren't necessarily aligned. Do you know what I mean? No, like, most definitely. I mean, because we all know what Ross Lyons like in a press conference, and yet you know, <laughs> clearly a good coach. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go because because as we know, they've changed a lot in their team. Last year, yeah. when the season was going nowhere, they decided to bench a couple of their. Starters, our mate Nordo was one of those yes. guys. Who yeah, Todd Lanchfield was Todd, the other, other one. Who at that stage were in the Boomers squad and yeah. playing, in, um, particularly the Asian Cup games. Yeah, yeah doing play, well. playing for Australia, yet yeah, can't get a game for the Wildcats. It's an extraordinary circumstance. Yeah, so they're going all out this year to make sure that they bounce back and make the finals and have a significant impact. And it seems like he's a very offensive coach. Yeah, so we've got some big signings. Keanu Pinder is, yep. is one of the obviously. Well, he's in the Australian ones. team for the World Championships. Yep, yep. yep. And um, and obviously we've still got Bryce Cotton. The, the Webster boys are both signed on. They can they can score. They can have a really yep. big impact. And this young kid from France that's part of the Next Star program, Alex Saar. Uh, Alex Saar. So, yeah. yeah. They're saying he's, he's a seven top 20 foot. NBA prospect. So, seven foot. Nothing to be sneezed about Just, there. I don't know. Chuck the ball to him, don't they? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Wildcats go. Yeah. Hopefully they go particularly well because they're one of those teams that in a WA sporting la- landscape, when they're not going well, then people Well, disappear. it upsets the very nature of things. Do you know yep. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We're ex- high expectations. Mm, yeah, definitely. One person who's got high expectations as well is Nat Fife. In the last couple of games, he's come on as the super sub for Frio. <laughs> hey, just, it's just the sub. Yeah, it's just now, through because it's him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought last week uh, he did particularly well, and it seemed like he was trying to f- he was finding his groove. But playing a quarter versus playing a full game is completely yeah. different. And you know he's done a lot of running, and no doubt he flogs himself at training all the time. And um, he should try training physically. <laughs> And uh, he uh, would be keen as mustard to play a full game. It, it's it's a shame that you couldn't then go, okay, next week or this week coming, he plays you know two and a half quarters and mm. just build him in a re- in a really well, they nice, could do and easy that, way. but off the bench rather than as the sub, like the manage minutes. That like that wouldn't be the first time that's happened. No, no, not at all. Nat, they, they could do the manage minutes things. Um, for sure, but when you know you're kind I of mean, one yes. down in a rotation, it yeah. really affects the rest of the team. Yeah. So that in that case, then you go, okay, well, you can't afford to sub him in the game too early because yeah. if someone gets injured, then you're cooked. But then do you start him on the ground and sub knowing him out. that the other person just say, hey, Fife is going to play a certain amount of mm. time. You're going to get a fair go mm. and we will sub you in. Mm. I guess that will be the thing that Justin Longmuir will be working out over the Can next Can you call him and ask him hours. what he's going to do? <laughs> I called him last week, actually. He can get back to me, JL. So oh, oh, he's not answering your calls anymore. Interesting. No, I don't have a few beers, so I just leave a few messages. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a bit thirsty? Like, did you wake up and realise you've texted him 37 times? Is that what happened? So, yeah, I'll get back to me. I love you. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.